standing. You can chill. You want to chill? This is what it's like when you've been quarantined for too long, too long, too long. Oh, oh, oh. What's up, everybody? It's your man, Pots and Pants. Welcome back to another episode of Friday Night Bites. Yesterday on Instagram TV, I showcased four ingredients for today's recipe. That was Sauvignon Blanc, shallots, white peppercorns, or black if you want to use those. That's fine. And tarragon. Today, we're talking about a beurre blanc. A beurre blanc is a classic French butter sauce, a butter emulsion, really, that's uh, made by incorporating butter, shocker, into a flavorful reduction. Today, we're going to be making our reduction liquid, our flavor base separately. Traditionally, you know, you could potentially say you poach something. You got that liquid that you just poached, let's say a salmon in. Once the salmon is done, you take it out, and as you're preparing everything else, you would just reduce that poaching liquid down, and then you would just use that as your base. This is something that we call a cuisson, all right? If you are a uh, learned student of the arts, like myself, or you could just call it a cooking liquid. It's, it's like the same thing. Either way works, okay? You might do the cuisson if it's just like you or your family, but if you were doing like a larger party, you could do it on the side. And that's why most restaurants do it this way because you can get that flavorful base, you can make it in larger batches, and then you can make derivative sauces out of that one flavorful batch. For today's reduction, we are going to be using a dry white wine, specifically a Sauvignon Blanc or a Fumé Blanc because it was made in California. We're also gonna use white wine vinegar and shallots. Now that's kinda all you need. It's a very traditional way to do it, but we're also gonna add in some peppercorns. You could use black or white. We're gonna use some tarragon. We're also gonna add in a touch, just a few time sprigs. So first things first, the reduction. Simply rough chop, crush, or combine all your ingredients, which are all listed with their amounts in the description below. And while you're down there, would you mind giving this video a like? If this has given you any value, if you've learned anything, if you're enjoying it, give it a like, maybe a comment, your thoughts, maybe tap that subscribe button and hit the bell notification. It really helps my channel grow. Appreciate you guys. Back to the video. Before you start your reduction, finish your mise en place. Okay, get your butter ready. Slice up 250 grams into tablespoon size pads. Juice up an entire lemon, put them both on a plate, and then just put it back in your fridge until the reduction is finished. You'll need that for later. Combine all your ingredients in your pan and reduce over, I'd say medium heat. As the liquid reduces, we are concentrating the flavors and the color. It's important to know here that we're not sauteing, we're not adding any caramelization to the shallots. It would definitely add a lot of flavor, but that would ruin the whole point of a beurre blanc. Blanc means white in French. Write that down. We're trying to keep this as pure and colorless as we really can. Now, technically, it's never going to be white, all right? It's, it's only going to be like yellowish ivory, especially if you're using grass-fed butter, which you should always be doing. Grass-fed butter is way more nutrient-dense, hence why it has the color. If we do want to make the sauce a little bit lighter in color and we want to add some like rich creaminess to it and also stabilize it, we can add heavy cream. But we're not just going to add heavy cream at the end of the sauce, you know, like a traditional pan sauce. That's fine. That works for that. But if we're looking to stabilize it, we need to reduce our heavy cream down about half for this recipe and most recipes because the more you reduce it down, the more stabilizing it is for your sauce. So that's what we're gonna do today. And we're just gonna add a little bit of cream because this is not a cream sauce, it's a butter sauce. By zero means do we wanna overwhelm our lighter flavors like the butter and the lemon. It's a butter sauce, not a cream sauce. But it might make you cream in your pants. At the end of the day, you know, personal preference. You can do what you want, but if you want it to be a beurre blanc in the traditional sense, don't be a shoemaker. So you can start off both of these reductions at high heat just to like jumpstart the process a bit. But as soon as it simmers, drop the heat to medium and allow it to just simmer down that way. We do not want anything to burn and we do not want our cream just exploding all over our kitchen. All right, again, don't be a nightmare. Don't be a shoemaker. As you can see here, over the course of about five to 10 minutes time, our cream is going to reduce down and become thicker, as I mentioned earlier. Now, once our wine reduction is significantly evaporated, you know, down to a, like a slighter syrupy consistency, something known as a sec, student of the arts, it's now time to reduce the heat to low and gradually begin incorporating our cold pads of unsalted butter. Unsalted butter is necessary to properly control your final seasoning. To do this, simply swirl your pan around as you would if you were you know, finishing a pan sauce, or you could also use a whisk. The former is often preferred by most chefs, but you know, it can be a bit noisy as you hear here. Could anything be more annoying? 
What I like to do generally is start with the swirl. And then once there's more to work with, I bring in the whisk then. Okay, it's hard to whisk something that's barely even there, you know? Also, personal anecdote, 10 years ago I scratched my dad's induction burner. <laughs> I hear about it every time I go home. So depending on your cooktop, maybe the swirl isn't the best idea, but it's okay to swirl it in the air as long as you keep it over your flame to maintain that proper temperature. Two more important things. Like all emulsions, it's very important that we start slow here. So, you know, A, we're gonna start with cold butter. If you don't use cold butter, the emulsion ain't gonna work right. Then, if you add your butter in too quickly to start this off, it ain't gonna work either. All right, so do not add your second pad of butter in until the first is incorporated. Do not add your third pad of butter in until the second is incorporated. Then and only then, once your sauce is a bit more stable, can you uh, start to giddy up on the butter and add a little bit more at a time as you move along. If the butter is taking too long to melt and incorporate, you could turn up the heat a little bit, but be very careful when you do this. If your sauce starts to look a little bit more oily rather than creamy, or if it's clearly starting to separate, then your sauce probably got too hot. If that starts to happen, just pull your pan off, okay? Place your pan on a cold surface, that'll drop the heat. Add more butter and whisk continuously, that's also gonna drop the heat. Continue doing this until you get back to that emulsified, creamy appearance and texture that you're looking for. Then continue to incorporate that butter until it's all gone. And then it's time to add in your final seasonings and your garnishes. But before you do that, first strain your sauce through a fine mesh sieve and give it a taste. Like I always say, you know, ingredients change. You know, the, every wine is different depending on which one you use. Every vinegar, well, vinegar doesn't change that much, TBH. But the fresher ingredients, you know, your herbs, your shallots, depending on how fresh they are, it's not gonna taste the same. Also, not every butter is created equally either. So for that reason, you wanna get a baseline. Before you add your finishing touches on it, your other garnishes, Taste it first. So to finish this up, you got a pinch of Redmond's kosher sea salt, preferably. I use an entire lemon for this recipe and also some finely ground white pepper if you choose to. Okay, and then you can just hold it in a warm place. Thermos works extremely well for this, all right? If not, you can just keep it off to the side, not in a hot place, in a warm place by your stove. It's gonna separate if it gets too hot. All right, this works great if you are hosting, you got a brunch or you're hosting a dinner and maybe there's multiple courses. You can make this way ahead and then just keep it for the rest of the night. So that's it, pretty simple, you know? But now you got multiple sauces on this channel to work with. And I'm always gonna take a little bit of time and practice, just like everything else. But soon, you're gonna be really impressed in some people. As always, feel free to get a little creative with this, okay? It's all up to you, really. Some classic variations on this include, you know, garlic, chervil, chives, you got ginger, lemongrass, saffron. You could even change up, you know, the wines to be red wine and red wine vinegar, something called a barouche. Whatever gets you off, you feel me? What gets me off is that you guys watch this and you guys are having fun and enjoying and learning, okay? So in order to continue doing that, subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you have the notifications when the next ones come out. Every Monday, I got a technique. Every Friday, I got a recipe. I got a lot of content on my Instagram, so stay tuned for that as well. Be sure to comment what you wanna see on this channel, what will add value to your life. Until next time, please be sure to leave the place better than you found it. And as always, I don't like saying goodbye. So I guess I'll just say thank you. Love and peace. My gnocchis. Shut up.